Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Yeah. How are you? I am fine, teacher. That is great. I'm happy to hear that. We have Claudia Yanet, Rufino Amilcar, Luis Enriquez, Gladys Campos, Michelle Escobar, Luis Alonso, right? Yes. Okay, yes. everybody, be welcome once again. I'm going to start sharing the screen with you right now. Should be this one here. Here we go. Okay, everybody, there it is. Um, once again, please be welcome. This is Inglés Intermedio, Modulo 3. And uh, that's me, Ivan Donyang, at your service. Once again, it's Intermediate 3, and this is Session 3. And today we have October the 13th of 2022, or 2022, as you prefer. So once again, be welcome. Yesterday, we had an activity, if you remember, OK? Yes. Um, some of you probably did it as homework and well in the case of some others we're going to do it here so here's the activity take a look it's a group activity right now answer the questions choose your answers from the box and when we check your answers you will have to, to use the passive voice with by and there's an example i say who painted the mona lisa the answer is leonardo da vinci yeah but that's the easy answer but we need to use the passive voice with by. So the answer will be, the Mona Lisa was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, that's the answer. I have a question for you. Did you do it in your house or are you going to do it right now? Be honest. <laughs> Doing house. You did it in the house. Yes. So we're going to check answers only right now. All right, that is okay. great. That is great, no problem. Let's start. So here's the speaking activity. You have uh, Gustav Eiffel, Christopher Columbus, Thomas Edison, James Cameron, ancient Egyptians, Carl Benz, Mozart, and William Shakespeare, okay? So we have the first question. And what is the first question? Who discovered America? I need a volunteer. Columbus. It's Christopher Columbus, of course. But uh, what about the sentence using um, the passive voice with by? Who can, who um. wants to participate? Okay, Luis. Um, America was discovered by Christopher Columbus. Yeah, America was discovered by Christopher Columbus. Hello. That's the answer. Very good. Thank you, yes. Luis. America was discovered by Christopher Columbus. Well, the Vikings were there before, <laughs> before Christopher Columbus, but okay. What about the second one? Who invented the first car? I need a volunteer right here. Raise your digital hand, please. Michelle, and then Claudia for number three. So Michelle, number two, please. Who invented the first car? The first car was invented by Carl Benz. The first car was invented by Carl Benz. That is correct. Very good. Thank you, Michelle. Um, Claudia, do you have uh, number three? Who designed the Eiffel Tower? Uh, the Eiffel Tower was designed by Gustav Eiffel. The Eiffel Tower was designed by Gustav Eiffel. That's right. Okay. Uh, the pronunciation supposedly is Eiffel, but in English, everybody says Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower. But yeah, the Eiffel Tower was designed by Gustav Eiffel. Okay. Nice. Thank you, Claudia. What about the next question? Who directed Titanic? Raise your digital hand, please. Who directed Titanic? Mm -hmm. Who can tell me the answer? Jenny and then Morena for the next one. Okay, Jenny, who directed Titanic? Titanic, mm -hmm. Titanic was directed by James Cameron. Titanic was directed by James Cameron. That is correct. Very good. James Cameron also directed other movies like Avatar 
or Terminator 1, Terminator 2, etc. right? He's a good director. So the next one, we have Morena, who composed the Turkish march. Do you know the Turkish march? It, it sounds like this. That's the Turkish march. So uh, Morena. The Turkish march was, was composed by Morsa. The Turkish march was composed by Mozart. That is correct. Very good. Thank you, Morena. What about the next one? Imelda, who wrote Hamlet? And then Francisco Isaac will have the last one. Okay, so Imelda? Well, Hamlet was wrote by William Shakespeare. Good, but there is a problem. Wrote is the past form of the verb write, not the past participle. So what's the past participle of write? <laughs> Well, I don't know. Okay, no, no problem, no problem. Um, who can help us with this? Okay, what is the past participle of write? Writing. Uh, writ written. written. Okay, written. it's written. Okay, written. so Imelda, second chance. Okay, can you tell me the complete uh, sentence, the complete passive sentence, please? Yeah, Hamlet was written by William Shakespeare. Yeah, Hamlet was written by William Shakespeare. Okay, very good. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, Isaac. Isaac wanted to participate. So do you have the last one, Isaac? Who built the pyramids? Uh, I don't know this. Uh, yo sabía la, la de Hamlet. <laughs> Pero ya solo nos queda uno. <laughs> Ajá, por, por ah, defecto. Sí, Ajá. Ajá. Sería... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, several people are talking at the same time. <laughs> okay, veamos. Um, so, who can tell me the answer then? Please raise your hand. Teacher and uh, let's see. Um, we have Imelda and Jenny Sanchez. Okay, we're going to listen to Jenny Sanchez this time. Okay, because Imelda okay. was uh, the previous one. So Jenny. Okay. The pyramids. Pyramid was built uh, by ancient, ancient Egyptian. Okay, the pyramids, and there is a problem with the verb be. We can't say the pyramids was because the noun pyramids is plural. So you need to change the verb be. Where? Aha, uh -huh. it's where. So how about the sentence again, Jenny Sanchez? What will be the complete sentence? The pyramids were, were built by the Ancient Egyptians. The pyramids were built by the ancient Egyptians. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. So yeah, those are the answers right there. Everybody, thanks for your participation. America was discovered by Christopher Columbus. The first car was invented by Carl Benz. The Eiffel Tower was designed by Gustave Eiffel. Titanic was directed by James Cameron. The Turkish March was composed by Mozart. Hamlet was written by William Shakespeare and the pyramids were built by the ancient Egyptians a long, long time ago. So yes, those are the answers, everybody. Very good, very good. Única um, recomendación siempre es, si, sobre todo para los verbos irregulares, si dudamos cuál es el past participle, siempre podemos ver una lista, ¿verdad? En internet, usted solo pone en Google, list of irregular verbs, y le van a salir, pero puñadas de, de sitios web donde aparecen las listas, ¿no? Así que ahí lo pueden encontrar fácilmente. Así que si tenemos duda de pronto, denle un vistazo a una listita y ahí sale la duda. Algo más que les quiero recomendar. Well, let's speak English. Um, you can memorize them, but memorize them little by little, little by little. If you have a list of irregular verbs, 
you can say today, for example, I am going to memorize the first five verbs, for example, the first five verbs. So you memorize the past, the base form, the past form, the past participle, and the meaning of the first five verbs in the list. The next day, you memorize five more. But you also review the first five. The next day, you memorize five more. Okay, but you review the first 10 and so on. So if you want to memorize the verbs, the irregular verbs, and I'm talking about the base form, the meaning, the past form and the past participle, that's a good method. You do it little by little, little by little, okay? Five verbs every day or four verbs every day or three verbs every day, okay? If you do it little by little and you do it constantly, you will memorize them. That's how I did it, okay? So let's continue. All right, Thank so you that for, was, for okay. the tip. you're welcome. Okay, um, that was the homework. And right now we have to, well, begin with the objectives. So by the end of this class, students will notice the different ways the letter O is pronounced. And also by the end of this class, you will be able to use the passive without by. So we're going to try to do two different things today. The first part is pronunciation. Now, if you see it, this is in uh, section 1.3 of the first unit. In the video explained by Miss Jessica, you will find pronunciation of the letter O. It goes, listen and practice. Notice how the letter O is pronounced in the following words. But again, the explanation given here is limited, okay? We need to do more. We need to practice more. And that's why I have this for you. Now, um, I want you to do me a favor. Quiero que me hagan un favor y que todos ahorita Eh, desconecten su micrófono. De acuerdo, porque a veces nos da un poquito de pena practicarlo así, ¿verdad? Yo voy a leerlo y ustedes en su casa, ¿verdad? Eh, libres de cualquier pena que podría darles, ¿verdad? Está repitiendo esto, quiero que, que lo repitan, que practiquen, ¿verdad? Ok, so here's what we're going to do. You have four different ways to pronounce the letter or the vowel O, okay? So everybody, take a look at this. We have the sound A, the sound O, the sound U, and the sound A. Uh. Four different sounds. Again, this is the sound A, O, U, and A. Uh. So I'm going to show you the words. I want you to listen and in your house, in the privacy of your house, I want you to repeat, okay? No les digo a todos, pongan el micrófono porque se va a escuchar un solo desorden, ¿verdad? Así que me van en su casita, ¿verdad? Repítalo usted. Okay, here we go. The first word is hot. Hot. Be careful, it's not hot. No, it's hot. Como con el sonido A, hot. College, college, occupy, occupy, toxic, toxic, rock, rock, pot, pot. Follow, follow. So if you pay close attention, in all these words, you have the sound a, ah, hot, college, occupy, toxic, rock, pot, follow, in all these words. For the next group, you have the sound o, oh. o, oh, as in o. Oh. O, oh, you have the word open, open. You have the word boat, boat. 
you have the word soul. Soul. Also, home. Home. Joke. Joke. Bone. Bone. Now, if you notice, all of these words have the sound O. O, open, boat, soul, home, joke, bone. Let's go with the next one. You have U, the sound U, as in through, through. Two, two, food, food, shoe, shoe, two, two, who, who, and soon soon so for all of these words you have the sound u through to food shoe to who soon and finally and this is the most difficult one you have the sound a uh, a uh. cuidado de no confundir con el primero esto es a uh, a uh. es más abierto a uh. but this one is a uh. Un poquito más cerrado. For example, you have the words love, love, come, come, comfort, comfort, company, company. Mother, mother, some, some, stomach, stomach. If you pay close attention, all of these words have the sound a, uh, a, uh, love, come, comfort. Company, mother, some, stomach. So we have four different sounds right here. A, O, U, and A. Four different sounds. Now, what are we going to do? We have an exercise and it's a little bit difficult. This is why you have to work in the breakout rooms. You need to help each other. Necesito que se ayuden para hacer este ejercicio. What are you going to do? Take a look. You need to classify these words according to the sound of the vowel O. Okay? And the four different categories are A, as in hot. O, as in boat. U, as in two. And a uh, as in come. All right. So what do you do? You have the words remove, job, onion, stone, hope, tool, nothing, clock, body, both, otter, goose, lose, sun, post, Monday, cost, movie, most, and bother. You need to classify the words. Los espacios están cabalitos, así que si le sobra, es que algo está malo. <laughs> están exactos los espacios, ¿verdad? Hay cinco por cada categoría. I'm going to form the groups, the breakout rooms right now, and uh, I want you to join your room and start working with your uh, classmates. Pero háganme un favor, de verdad, de verdad, trabajen con los compañeros, ¿verdad? 
eh, porque a veces entro a los breakout rooms y veo que están todos calladitos, trabajando individualmente. Entonces no tiene sentido irse al breakout room. La idea es comunicarse con el compañero, ¿verdad? Ayudarse entre todos, sobre todo porque el ejercicio es un poquito difícil, un poquito. Pero al final vamos a revisar las respuestas. So, um, I'm going to form the groups now. We have uh, 19 people, so I'm going to form five groups. Okay, room one. In room one, we have Francisco Isaac, Olivia Osorio, Rufino Amilcar, and Jenny Sanchez. Room two, Manuel Aristides, Natalie Alejandra, Paola Maria, and Roberto Tovar. Room three, Estela Lara, Gladys Campos, Imelda Sánchez, and Luis Alonso Urias. Room four, Griselda Mendoza, Michelle Escobar, Morena Medina, and Sonia Guadalupe. And in room five, we only have three people, Alejandra Magaña, Claudia Yanet, and Luis Enriquez. I'm going to form the breakout rooms now. Please, everybody, join them. And remember, I'm going to send you uh, this information via WhatsApp so you can all see it. Let's begin. Okay, everybody, I just sent you the exercise via WhatsApp. I want you to join the groups now and start working on the activity. I'm going to start uh, visiting the breakout rooms individually right now. Uh, uh, Hi. Remove Hi. Hi. Remove 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 Lo que pueden hacer es desactivar el micrófono y si no me equivoco para hablar presionan la barra espaciadora y la mantienen presionada. Mientras esté presionada el micrófono se activa nuevamente. Ya cuando la sueltan se vuelve a desactivar. Creo yo que así es. <ríe> pueden hacer la prueba por mí. Okay. Guys, unmute, uh, unmute, unmute. Ah, mute and unmute. So, what about the first word? You have remove. Remove. Where remove. is that? Is in that the in the column? Second, in the like three. Some, in the three uh, options. Like in some, option three. In option three. Okay. Remove. remove. Okay, option that three. is that is correct. It's remove in option number three, the third column, because you have u as in two. Remove the sound yeah. u. Very good. Remove. Remove. All two. right. Two. Two. Uh huh. And in option three, two. Two. Okay, that's that's right. In option three. Um. Movie, option three, movie. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's movie. good. That's good. Okay. I'm going to visit a different room right now. Please continue. Help each other. Okay. Move. Thank you. See you in a few minutes. If. Um, ahora vamos con 
True. 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 Sería la, la dos. Ah, la U, perdón. La tres. Ajá, tres. Two. Tres. Two. Let's, let's speak English. <laughs> Number three. <Yeah. laughs> Number two. Okay. <laughs> Number three. Okay. Number three. Two. All right. La U. Ahora, uh -huh. nothing. Um, nothing. No. Nothing. Podría ser. Number maybe. two. No. Oh. No, nothing. 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 Ah, Podría, ah, la nothing. A, la A, la number one. Number one. Number one. Not, not exactly because we don't say nothing. It's more like no, uh, uh, ah, ah, nothing. Entonces la cuatro. Number four. Nothing. Más, mm -hmm. más como ahogado el, el sonido. Un poquito más ahogadito, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, next, next. Clock. Clock, clock, clock. Clock. También es un poco ahogado. Actually, the pronunciation is clock. 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 Ah, entonces la A. Clock. Uh -huh, so, one. number one, clock. Mm -hmm. Clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I want you to continue. And I'm going to visit a different room now. See you in a few minutes. Okay. Help. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Hi, teacher. Hi. Goose. 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 At third. Goose. Two. Two. Are you sure? Number two? No. Num number two at, has at the sound O. Go. Oh. Three. Uh, number three. Third. Okay. Says Estela. Yeah, it's number three. You have oo as in two. Goose. Ooh. The sound oo. Goose. Goose. Mm -hmm. Can you remember, tell me in donde dice body a la par, el siguiente no sé qué es. Other. Both. No. Both. 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 Mm -hmm. Ah, both is. Mm -hmm. uh, the number two. Both. Ah, both is the mm -hmm. two. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Both. Both. Mm -hmm. I said both. 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 That's two. right. Loose. 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 As is two. Third. Loose. Lose. Number two. Lose. 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 Three. It's actually number three. Lose. Lose. Ooh, as in two. Lose. Son. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Number three. I'm going to uh, jump into a different room now. See you in a few minutes. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Son. Yo creo que es la segunda. Hello. Teacher, no salió, no salió más en una, en la U. Les, híjole, entonces ahí tenemos un problema porque si le sobra es porque algo está mal. No, más o menos, vamos. Es que lo que pasa es que no podemos clasificar, este, no sabemos si es a Gus, sí, habíamos, Gus, Gus. Goose. 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 Goose.
Post. 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 Which column is that? Eh, teacher, ¿cómo se llama el símbolo último? ¿Qué nos dio? Eh, la pronunciación es A. A. A, as in cam. A, as in cam. Mm -hmm. So, again, the first one is A. A, as in hat. The second hat. one is O, as in boat. The third one is U, as in two. And number four is A, as in come. Entonces sería post. But the pronunciation is not post, it's post. <laughs> ah, post. Post. Ah, en la U, entonces. So, column one, two, three, or four? Four. Number four, not really. No, three, three. Three. Number three, not really. <laughs> it's different. The second one. It's the second one. Yeah, Michelle says post. oh because you say post. Oh. Es que se le oye una post. Teacher. Post. Uh -huh. Ajá. <laughs> es como oh post. Uh, post. Uh -huh. Como uh -huh. aparece en la segunda columna. Oh. Uh -huh. As in boat. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, Okay. That's the idea. Perfect. Okay. okay, I'm going to jump into a different room. Please continue. See you later. <laughs> See you later. Y uno en la tres. Uno en la uno y uno en la tres. Bye. Uh -huh. Pero ¿cuál sobran entonces? Mas y brother. Debe sobrar brother. dos. Brother. Dijo que faltaba una en la una, ¿verdad? Sí. Para mí que es brother. Vaya, ese... Brother. Brother podría ser que quepa en la cuatro o la, o la uno. Pienso. Para mí la cuatro. Pienso, pues. Bien, se puede poner en la cuatro, no hay problema. Are you sure? Aunque yo pensaría que, que ese boder iría en la dos, porque sería boder. Not really, pensaría because, because you don't pronounce boder. The pronunciation is bother, 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 bother. Es como molestar o molestarse. Father. Father. Entonces sería en la uno o la cuatro. Ajá. Uh -huh. Hay que choose. Para one, mí suena igual. O four. <laughs> It goes in number, number one. Because the sound is ah, ah, bother. Bother. Okay. It's number one. Bother. Mm -hmm. Bother. Number one. Bother. Bother. Yes. Can you repeat again the number, the sound of the, the number four? Number four. Okay, I'm going to yeah. go from one to four. The first one is A, as in hot. Number two is O, as in boat. Number three is U, as in two. And number four is A, as in come. Se parece a la primera, pero yeah. es más cerrada. La primera yeah. es A, y la cuatro es A, as in Come. That's the difficult part because number one and number four are similar. Okay. okay. I'm you. going to, you're welcome. I'm going to close the breakout rooms now. See you in one minute. See you. Everybody, I'm going to close the breakout rooms right now. See you in one minute.
25 seconds. Okay, so um, let's begin. What about the first word, remove? Which column should it uh, be in? You can raise your hand. Siempre acuérdense, levanten la manita. Okay, Olivia, and then Jenny. Okay, Olivia. And the uh, other, uh, other onion body, some, Nothing. Uh, no, but my question is, my question is, the word remove, which column did you classify it in? Column one, column two, column three, or column four? Column three. Column three. Let's see. Yes. That is correct. Very good. Yes. Remove. Great. Jenny, what about the next word? You have job. Job. Where is it? In the first, in the first column. That is correct. Very good. Thank you. Okay. What about the next one? You have onion. Onion. Volunteers, please raise your hand. Manuel Aristides. The word is in, in two. Number two. It's not in number two because we don't oh. pronounce onion, but onion. it's. It's onion. onion, onion. Okay. Second chance, second opportunity. Manuel Aristides. Onion, onion. Uh, number, number four. Number four. Let's check. That is correct. Very okay. good. Thank you, Manuel. Imelda wants to participate. What about stone? Imelda. A second. The second column. Let's see. That is correct. Stone. Great. Morena, what about hope? Uh, the microphone. Okay. Oh, sí, ya le escuchamos. Hope. Number two. Number two. Let's check. That is correct. Very good. Thank you, Morena. Okay. Um, what about the next word? Estela, the word tool. Number three. Number three. Let's see. Very good. Yeah, it's number three. Tool. Nice. Natalie, what about nothing? Number four. Number four. Let's check. That is correct. Very good. Nothing. Great. Um, next. I don't know if Manuel Aristides, you want to participate or if you forgot to lower your hand. <laughs> no bajé la mano, pero puedo participar. Ah, okay, okay, no hay problema, no hay problema. Eso es lo malo, dejar la manita levantada, que sorry, uno, yo me sorry, confundo. Sorry. <laughs> no, no hay problema, yeah, no hay problema. Sorry. Okay, what about uh, this one? You have clock. Clock in number... <laughs> clock in number... Four? No. Number four. No. Number one. Number Perdón. one. Perdón. Number okay, one. let's see. Yeah, that's right. It's number one. Very good. Okay. Thank you, Manuel. What about the next word? Volunteers, please. Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Olivia. And then Natalie and then Francisco Isaac. Okay. So, Olivia? You have the word body, body. Column one. Column one. That's right. It's column one. Very good. Body. That's great. Thank you. Uh, next is Natalie. Okay, Natalie, what about the word both? Number two. Number two. Let's check. Yes, that is correct. Second column, both. Great. Um, 
Uh, Griselda, what about the word other? Other. Number one. Number one. It's not number one because we don't say other. It's more like other, other. Uh, Second opportunity. Uh -huh. Number four. Number four. Let's see. That is right. Very good. It's number four. Okay, good. Uh, we're going to give the chance to Paola and Luis because they haven't participated. Let's see, Paola, what about goose? Number three. Number three. Goose. Correct. Very good. Uh, Luis. What about lose? Number three. Number three. Okay, very good. Now Morena wanted to participate. Morena, what about sun? Number one. Number one. It's not number one because we don't say sun, but sun. Um, number four. Number four. That is correct. Very good. Thank you, Morena. What about post, Imelda? Post. Mm -hmm. two. Number two, let's check. Post, that is correct. Very good. Okay, uh, the next one, who wants to participate? No sé si, okay, Francisco Isaac, you have Monday. Monday sería uh, option four. Option four, Monday, correct, very good. So we have completed one of the columns. You have onion, nothing, otter, sun, and Monday. Nice, thank you very much. What about the next one? You have cast. Raise your hand, please. Natalie. Number one. Number one. Yeah, sure. You have the cost of something. Very good. What about the next one? Movie. Griselda. Number three. Number three. That is correct. Movie. Great. And we have completed another column. We have only two more. So what about this one? You have most. Olivia. Column two. Column two, most, very good. And of course, the last one, bother, she's going number one. Everybody, great job. Okay, very good, very good. Hubo unos cuantos errores, pero de lo más normal, ¿verdad? La pronunciación en inglés es un poquito complicada. Así que, por el esfuerzo, estamos súper bien todos. So, um, I'm going to read the words in your house. Uh, you can mute your microphone if you want. Um, in your house, repeat the words, okay? So you have a, as in hot, job, clock, body, cast, bother, o, as in boat, stone, hope, both, post, most. Then you have U as in two. Remove. Two. Goose. Lose. Movie. And finally, you have A as in come. Onion. Nothing. Other. Sun, Monday. And with that, we finish this section. Let, let's move on to the next one. There is a conversation uh, that I want you to see in part 1.6 in the video explained by Ms. Jessica. You will read this conversation in your house, please. So complete this part at home. You have this person who says, I need information. Let's zoom in a little bit, but well, <laughs> it looks very blurry. So you probably should read it at home. Okay, we're going to continue because we don't have much time. It's 8.46. 
We only have 15 more minutes. Let's move on to this part. Now, um, grammar again. We use the passive voice without by, okay? Esto es un repaso de lo que vimos ayer. Solo que hoy se lo voy a presentar más bonito porque ayer fue así en un eh, archivo de Notepad. Hoy va en presentación de PowerPoint. So we use the passive voice without by when the agent is. Number one, unknown, when you don't know who the agent is. Example, it's the same example from yesterday. The wheel was invented over 5,000 years ago. Okay. The wheel was invented over 5,000 years ago. So the question is, who invented the wheel? You can participate. Who invented the wheel? I don't know. Exactly. You don't know because nobody knows. It's unknown. ¿Quién inventó la rueda? A saber. A saber. Alguien inventó, pero no sabemos quién fue. So the, the agent is unknown. The wheel was invented over 5,000 years ago. Who invented the wheel? Nobody knows. It's a mystery. So if you notice, we don't say the wheel was invented by somebody over 5,000 years ago. It's redundant. Es como que dijera en español, la rueda fue inventada por alguien. Bueno, pero si no decimos quién fue, entonces para qué vamos a decir por alguien? ¿Verdad? Sale sobrando. Es lo mismo en inglés. So uh, you use the passive voice without by when the agent is unknown. That's number one. Number two, you use the passive voice without by when the agent is obvious. You don't need to mention this because everybody knows. Okay, this is the opposite. Everybody knows the answer. So you have two criminals were arrested last night. Okay, two criminals were arrested last night. So the question is, who arrested the criminals? Who arrested the criminals? Estela. Police. The police, it's pretty obvious, yeah. The police, of course. So you don't need to say two criminals were arrested by the police last night because everybody knows that the police arrest the criminals. Okay. So it's not necessary because it's obvious. So, yeah. And finally, we use the passive voice without by when the agent is unimportant. Okay when it's unimportant. And I repeat what I said yesterday. No es que la gente no sea importante, si es importante, pero no es importante para entender la oración, para entender el mensaje. Okay, an example. Oranges are imported into Canada every week. Every week, they import oranges. They import oranges. So the question is, who imports the oranges into Canada? You can participate. Who imports the oranges into Canada? Imelda. Could be many of people. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it necessary? Aha, whoever. Uh -huh, whoever, right? Is it necessary for me to know who exactly imports the oranges into Canada? Do I need to know this? No, it's not no. necessary. What I need to know is that oranges are imported into Canada every week. Who does this? It's irrelevant. ¿Quién hace esto? Bueno, supongo que los que cortan las naranjas y luego las distribuyen, creo que hay una cadena de distribución después de eso. Entonces, ¿quién lo hace? Pues no sé, pero no necesito saberlo tampoco para entender la oración. That's why the agent is unimportant. Okay, so who imports the oranges into Canada? We don't need to know that to understand the sentence. That's why the focus is on the action, not on the person who does the action. Okay, so that's, uh, those are the three circumstances in which we use the passive voice without by. When the agent is unknown, when the agent is obvious, 
and when the agent is unimportant. And uh, I think there is an exercise. No, there are two examples. We have uh, 10 more minutes. Okay. Um, read the following example. There's the active sentence. They sell cold drinks here. They sell cold drinks here. Okay. What is the passive version of this active sentence? Imelda. Cold drinks were sell here. Okay. There are two problems. Number one, when they say they sell, this is present simple. So the verb oh. B should be in present. Uh -huh. Are sell. Here. Okay. Better, but still there is a problem. What is the past participle of the verb sell? Selling. No, that's the ing sold. form, the present participle. Sold. sold. It's sold. sold. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you say cold drinks. Okay. This is the verb, of course, is the main verb, and it's in present simple. The subject is they, and it's also the agent. And then the object is cold drinks. If you remember, they sell what? Cold drinks. Okay. Now, to make a passive sentence, you need to use the object from the active sentence. You put it at the beginning and you have cold drinks. And after that, you have the verb be in present simple because we identified present simple in the active sentence. So cold drinks are. And after that, you need the main verb in past participle. The past participle of sell is sold. So cold drinks are sold here. Okay. Y será que es necesario que yo diga, por ejemplo, cold drinks are sold by them here. Is it necessary? No. It's no. not necessary. Not necessary. It's not necessary. So we don't do it. Notice that the object in the active sentence, cold drinks, is the same as the subject in the passive sentence. In this case, we, number one, don't know who does the action. And number two, we don't need to know that to understand the sentence. It's unnecessary. Okay? So cold drinks are sold here. Si usted le enseña en una tienda y dice, yo, yo ando buscando que me vendan una, mi Coca-Cola bien helada. Okay, bueno. Uh, Usted le dicen, en esta tienda venden. Usted no le va a preguntar, ¿pero quién la vende? <ríe> Eso no importa. Lo, lo que quiere usted es la soda, ¿verdad? Entonces, es algo bien parecido. Usted le van a decir, cold drinks are sold here. Ah, chévere. Eso es lo que a usted le importa, que le vendan la soda. Ahora, ¿quién lo despache? Eso es lo de menos. Ok. So, cold drinks are sold here. And this is the passive voice. Always remember, you have to use the verb be in the same tense that you identified in the active sentence. And after that, you have to use the main verb in past participle. That's the formula. Second example. Somebody painted this office last week. Okay. So what is the main verb in this sentence? What is the verb? Painted. Painted, that's right. Okay, the verb is painted. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's painted. So um, that's the main verb. And it is in, uh, sorry, what verb tense is that? Ya les enseñé ahí rapidito. Se me fue un clic de más. Okay, um, what is the verb tense? Past simple. Past simple, ahí está. So painted, the main verb is in past simple. Eso significa que cuando hagamos la oración pasiva, vamos a ocupar el verb be en past simple. Ok, what is the subject? This office. Ay, ya la voy a poner. Um, the office. That's, but that's not the subject, that's the object. Someone. Someone. Someone, ok, someone. That's the subject. Siempre el subject, acuérdense, es lo que va antes del verbo. Ese es el subject. So someone painted this office last week. So someone is the subject. And what about the object? 
Remember that you can find the object very easily if you just ask yourself a question. Someone painted what? This office. This office. The answer to that question is the object. There you go. Así se encuentra. Solamente llegue hasta el verbo y pregúntese usted el qué. ¿Qué fue lo que pintaron? Someone painted what? Y la respuesta de esa pregunta, ese es el object. Someone painted what? The office. Ah, okay. Yes. The object. So, as we know, we have to take the object from the active sentence. We put it at the beginning of the passive sentence. So you say this office, it's the new subject. And then you need to use the verb be. Okay, so what's next? It was, his office was painting last week. Correct. The office was painted last week. Correct. This office was painted last week. Very good. So what happens if I say this office was painted by someone last week? Is it necessary? No. It's not necessary. No. Uh, las oficinas no se pintan solas. Alguien tuvo que haberla pintado, pero no necesitamos saber eso. So this office was painted last week. Si decimos nosotros by someone, bueno, es innecesario. Es como que dijera en español, esta oficina fue pintada por alguien. Ah, oh, chévere. <laughs> So this office was painted last week and that's all we need. We don't use by and the agent. So again, notice that the object in the active sentence, which is this office, is the same as the subject in the passive sentence. In this case, we don't know who did the action. It was someone, a person that we don't know. And we don't need to know to understand the sentence. The sentence is completely logical like this. You don't need to say by someone. It's unnecessary. Okay, we don't have much time and there is an exercise. Oh, let's see, let's see. Let's do the exercise. Okay, very quickly. Your turn. Complete the sentences using these verbs in the correct form, either present or past. When I say either present or past, that means that sometimes you will have to use the verb being present, like is or are, and sometimes you will have to use it in past, was or where. So be careful. The context of the sentence will indicate if you will need the present or if you will need the past. All right? The verbs are cause, damage, hold, invite, make, demolish, show, discover, translate, and write. Vamos a tratar de hacer esto. Bueno, les voy a preguntar. ¿Quieren que lo resolvamos en este momento? Así, um, sin reunirnos en los breakout rooms, porque eso nos tomaría demasiado tiempo. Sería ya, de una sola vez. O preferirían que les quedara esto de tarea. De tarea para de tarea. Así de tarea. Hacerlo mejor. Ah, vaya. As homework. As homework. Okay. As homework. Okay, no problem, no problem. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can solve that. Or we can check the answers tomorrow in class. So, because we still need uh, we still have two minutes. <laughs> I have to go back, okay? and uh, review this. So un repaso acá, porque nos faltan dos minutos. Again, remember this, very important. We use the passive voice without by when the agent is unknown. For example, when the wheel was invented over 5,000 years ago. So who invented the wheel? Nobody knows, it's unknown. We use the passive voice without by when the agent is obvious. Two criminals were arrested last night. Who arrested the criminals? It was the police, of course. And finally, we use the passive voice without by when the agent is unimportant. Oranges are imported into Canada 
every week. So who imports the oranges into Canada? Hmm? I don't know, and it's not necessary for me to know. We don't need to know that to understand the sentence, okay? That's why the focus is on the action, not on the person who does the action. Before we finish, do you have any questions? No question. No questions. It's okay. okay. Great. Okay, so in that case, I'm just going to take a screenshot of the exercise. Yeah, casi me un click. El object pasa a ser subject. El object de la oración activa pasa a ser el subject de la oración pasiva. Así es. Y el auxiliar después que toca. Tocaría el auxiliar es el verb. Dependiendo del caso. Sí, el verb depende del caso. Ajá, así es. Si es present simple, va a ir el verb en present simple. Si es past simple, va a ir el verb en past simple. Y así. Por eso es bien importante analizar primero la oración activa, todos sus elementos, porque eso es lo que nos va a indicar cómo vamos a convertirla en una oración pasiva. Ok, I'm taking a screenshot right now. And uh, I'm going to send it to you via WhatsApp in this moment. Thank you. You're welcome. Here we go. There it is. Ahí va, ahí va, ahí va. Okay. Is there it is. Okay? So everybody, check your I WhatsApp. Received. And yes. great. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for your participation and your attendance Thank tonight. Thank you. Take good Thank care you, and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank ah, you. by the way, tomorrow. antes de eso, acuérdense, mañana hay clase. En reposición yeah. a la de lunes. <laughs> no van a pensar, ah, bien, yes, no hay yes, clase. Yes. Si tenemos clase, okay. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Okay. 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 See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye bye.